This is problem 8.6 on page 447. The 20-pound block A hangs from a cable as shown. Pulley C is connected by a short link to block E, which rests on a horizontal rail. Knowing that the coefficient of static friction between block E and the rail is 35%, and neglecting the weight of block E uh, and the friction in the pulleys, determine the maximum allowable value of theta if the system is to remain in equilibrium. So basically, we've got a, um, a pulley system. Let's start off with the shelf up at top. We've got our block E here, and we've got a link at an angle because there is a, you know, let's take this link down even farther. There's a pulley at the end of the link where we have a rope attached down to a weight, also on a pulley. And then this side has tension T. We're trying to figure out the maximum angle theta if the block is not to slip. So we're neglecting the weight of E. And the only thing that they've told us is that we've got a 20 pound block. Is that pounds mass or pounds force? Pounds mass. And a friction coefficient, a static coefficient of friction of 35%. Okay? How do you think we should approach this? Probably with free body diagrams, right? Mm -hmm. What did I say this was? 8.6? Yeah. What shall, of what shall we take a free body diagram? Uh, say the pulley, or at the pulley at the... Good. The, the we can take the wave. pulley by itself and figure out how much force is in this rod. I think we might get away with taking the pulley and the block together. I think that might be all right. Because if you think about it, you can figure out the tension in this rope pretty easily, right? Because, look, if we let's start off with a really easy free body diagram of just the weight. If it has 20 pounds mass, how much does it weigh on Earth? 20 pounds force. We don't have to do any math to figure that out. So if we take segments of the rope, how much force is in each side of the rope? Apparently 10 pounds, right? So now we know the tension is 10 pounds. This is the same rope right. everywhere. But now if we take a free body diagram of the pulley with the link and the block, what forces act on the block? Well, there's the weight of the block, but they told us to neglect that, right? There is a normal force. I'm going to put the normal force on the top. Really, it's at the bottom from the lower surface pushing up, but you know, forgive me for, well, tell you what, let's do it this way. Now I've got some space. How's that? I do like to have the normal force on the surface where it acts. Which way do you suppose friction is acting? Well, friction always acts opposite of impending motion. If there was no friction, which way would the block move? To the right or to the left? To the right. To the right. So friction acts opposite. Okay. So friction is acting to the left. We usually use a single-headed arrow like that. And understand, this is always at 90 degrees to the normal force. Okay? What other forces are acting on the system? Tension. Tension. And, oh, by the way, tension. And what else? Well, also tension. See that? And we know the magnitude of this tension is just 10 pounds. <coughs> Could we use this to figure out the magnitude of the normal force and the friction force? Sure. Let's do it this way. We know we have an angle theta. So let's simply sum forces in the horizontal and vertical directions. Okay? So if we sum forces in the, let's say, vertical direction, we'd have negative 2t, takes care of those two. And then minus ty, let me just call it ty for the time being. We'll figure out the details of whether it's sine or cosine of theta later. Okay? And then plus the normal force. That better come out to zero. Otherwise, the block's going to accelerate. We'd be in dynamics. Some forces in the horizontal direction, what do we have? Well, we have negative friction force acting this way. Well, plus how much of it? T. 
sub what? Uh, T sub x. Good, T x. That's it. The horizontal component of that tension. Do you begin to smell a little problem here? Uh, maybe that there's no variable that we're solving for. Uh, well, I think there like is. The equation let me let me expand both of these. You'll see what I mean. So if I expand this, uh, let's see. Let's let's do it this way. If we expand the sum, expand the sum force in the y direction, we get negative two t minus t times. Let's see to get the y component. That's over here. So the triangle looks something like this with t there and theta here. So if we're in the what the vertical direction, then that would be the cosine side, right? Because of the way the angle is measured off the vertical. Plus normal force equals zero. If we continue with this one, so the force is in the x direction, we get negative f plus t. Well, that must be the other one, sine theta equals zero. So what's the problem here? Well, we could figure out, well, we already know the tension. So we could figure out the friction force, right? But that doesn't help us here, does it? Because here we have, oh no, wait a second. No, that won't help us. We don't know the angle. We don't know the friction. And we don't know the normal force. I see two equations and three unknowns. Go ahead. I was literally about to say that, but yeah. OK. Same right. result. So what do we do? Solve for them. We can't, not with two equations. We need another equation. Bring out a protractor. What's the relationship between the friction force and the normal force? Is there any? Is it uh, uh, perpendicular? Well, they're perpendicular to one another. Is there some other mathematical relationship? What did they say? Determine the maximum allowable value of theta if the systems are to remain in equilibrium. If, if, if we keep increasing this angle, eventually it's going to slide, right? And that's not what we want. So what do you know about the magnitude of the friction force when we've got theta max here? What do you know about the friction? It is zero. It's not moving. It's not zero. Friction force is definitely not zero in that case. It would be less than. Uh, you're on the right track, but it wouldn't be less than. It'd be equal to what? Oh, isn't it that little tangent function that we just got done with? Wouldn't it be this? You know, that would be the relationship between the friction and the normal force. Why equal? Because the friction is now at its maximum. That's why it's equal. Okay. If we just pull straight down with this tension, there won't be any friction force because this arm is going to hang right underneath it. Right? It's going to hang right underneath the block. There's no sideways force on the block. So this is the other relationship. And how do we know that this is true and this is not? what we want. We know that's not what we want because we want the maximum angle, therefore the maximum friction force. So as soon as I do that, those two are equal. You see? So that's a, the relationship that we're missing. Now we should have enough equations and unknowns because we've got three equations, three unknowns. You notice that the friction and normal force have already appeared in other equations. So we just have a system of three equations to solve. So let's see, what's the easy way to do that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll just go from here. So friction force minus mu n. I'm going to drop the s, but I still mean static friction. Plus tension sine theta equals zero. So there's one equation. Uh, let's see. I guess we could take that. You know what? It's going to be a little bit of a pain. Let's do it this way. Let's square it to add. So let's take this equation and square it. Take this equation and square it, and then add them together. Notice I've already used this equation because I got rid of the friction force. I don't really care about the friction force because I don't think they asked for it. You know, they just want to know theta. So if we square and add, you'll see what happens. So we don't need this anymore. In fact, we don't really need this. So if we square this equation, well, I don't want to square it like it is. That would be a bit of a pain. Let me put uh, negative t cos theta equals 2t minus n. If we square it, why would I square it? Well, you'll see why. If I then do the same thing, let's see, we use that, but I don't want to erase it yet. If I do the same thing to this equation, let's put one on one side, mu n equals t sine theta, and then I square it. 
mu n squared equals t squared sine squared theta. Then when I add, well, I'll have to move around, but when I add this side to this side, I'll get t squared cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. On the right-hand side, I'll get from here 2t minus n squared and then plus mu n squared. Why would I do all of that? Because what's sine squared plus so cosine squared? Anybody know? One. That's just one. So t squared equals, and let's start expanding these out. Uh, let's see. Now that'd be what? 4t squared minus 4tn, right? Because I'd have 2t times n twice plus n squared plus b squared n squared, I guess. Or this. And let's see. It looks like we can combine these two and write negative 3t squared uh, equals. Uh, no simplifications there. Let me put it on the other side there. So we'll take it to the other side. Plus 4tn equals. Oh, that's not what I want. Because I want n by itself. Let me try again. Uh, let's just put it all together on one side. 0 equals, we'll pull out n squared terms first. So n squared times, you see how these two can be combined, 1 plus mu squared. So that's those two terms. Uh, and then I'll write minus 4tn. That's that term. And if I pull this to the other side, I'd be left with plus 3t squared. Everybody okay with that? So now we have a quadratic equation in n, and we can solve for n. So uh, in this case, a is 1 plus mu squared, b is negative 4t, and c is 3t squared. So n is equal to, how does it go, negative b, so that's 4t plus or minus root b squared, well, that's easy. That's just 16t squared minus 4ac. Well, a is here. I wish I could keep that. Let's see. You know what? I can keep, I can keep my equations by doing this. So I'll want these equations a little bit later. I don't need that anymore. I need to protect that. All right. So where were we? Quadratic equation. 4ac. So a is 1 plus mu squared uh, times 3t squared over 2 times a, which is 1 plus mu squared. Okay? If I'd have plugged in numbers a long time ago, it would look a lot more friendly to you, but I want you to get used to working with symbols. We know what t is, is 10, right? So this is the same thing as 40 plus or minus root. Well, t squared would be 100 times 16 would be 1,600 minus 4 times 1 plus mu squared. But mu, I've erased it. It was 0 0.35 if I remember right. Uh, times 3. So I guess I could put that 3 with the 4 and call it a 12, right? Because they're multiplied. And then times t squared, so that's times 100. So I guess I could have just written 1,200. Let's put that on the end. All divided by 2 times 1 plus 0 0.35 squared. There we go. So that should give me the normal force. So take your calculators and tell me what this result is, if you would, please. I think I've introduced a solution that I may not have had had I just substituted and solved. We might try a different way here in a second. But let's see what we get first. There'll be two answers. One with a positive option, one with a negative option. Hopefully one of them will make sense and the other one won't. It will pretty much be done.
You want to have a number? I got domain error for the negative. Domain error for the plus. I got domain error for the negative. <laughs> but I'm going to switch calculators just so right. I got an error for the negative as well. Anybody get anything for the positive? You know what, let's just use Excel, it's easier. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the, because the thing underneath the square root is negative 587. Uh, that would be a problem. That means I did something wrong along the way. Uh, I see a positive. I keep getting the error. So. Yeah, so if this is negative, that would be a problem. 1 plus 0.35 squared, though, times 1,200, comes out bigger than 1,600. Yeah, it shouldn't. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, let's see, B is negative 4 <coughs> times 10. So B is negative 40. C is 3 times t squared, so 300. So n equals negative b. Let's take plus quantity 1600 minus that times 1200 to the half power. But all of this must be divided by Two and divided by a. Yeah, it's okay. Must be hitting the numbers wrong on your calculator. What does the negative solution look like? Okay. So two options for the normal force: about twenty-five pounds and ten point seven pounds. So uh, which one is it? Well, let's see. Uh, it's because we don't have our angle theta. Let's see, I'm trying to think of what quick way to do this so it'll be easy. Can you hover over cell B5 real quick? Sure. If you're wondering why I divide by 2 and then I divide by A, it's the same thing. In Excel, when you put a divided sign, it means that what follows it goes in the denominator. So 2 goes in the denominator and A goes in the denominator. Did I make a mistake up there? Anybody see the mistake? If you do, let me know. Um, you know what, let me substitute this all. That might be quicker than figuring out whether the positive or negative solution is correct. I was hoping one of them would make sense and the other would be negative and it wouldn't make any sense, but that didn't happen. So let's just go the long way. All right, so um, let's see. I guess we've got the same equations up here. Yeah, so except I've already substituted and gotten rid of the friction, so that should be fine. Uh, let's see. Actually, we're going to end up with the same thing no matter what we do, aren't we? Well, anyway, let's see what happens. So if we say, um, well, we're going to get a positive or negative result for the theta, so actually we do have to figure out which one's right. Let's see what makes sense. If we had 24.9 pounds for our normal force, that would make some sense because we've got 20 pounds at least acting down this way, right? Plus some. So there's no way it can be 10.7 pounds because that would mean that this tension was acting up like this somehow, right? So the only thing that makes sense is the which one was that? The plus result? Yeah, the plus result. Go ahead. Why is, why was B 1 plus 0.35? B is, B is negative 14. Negative 14. T is 10, negative 40. 1600 minus 1 foot, huh? Let's be 1. Oh, did I grab the wrong cell? Yeah, minus, uh, it should be minus 4ac. I bet I grabbed the wrong cell, didn't I? 
No, B1 is the correct cell. I forgot a 4 in there, though. It should be 4AC. So that's going to give us a uh, problem. Yeah, so I messed up somewhere in my math. Uh, let's see, let me try again. So apparently I made a mistake. We started here, and what I did was square and add. Let's try that again. Maybe I went too fast. So if we uh, do that, that's okay. Okay. So then. So far, so good. Everybody, everybody agree? Okay. So then, I bet I just made a mistake somewhere along the way. Uh, let's see. Two times two is four. T squared. And I guess I'll go more slowly. But negative times negative is positive. So then I got to, I think, this point. Let's see if anything's wrong. So if we take, if we factor out an n squared, we'd have 1 plus mu squared. I think that's okay. And these two together is negative 4tn. <coughs> Pull this to the other side, that is plus 3t squared, so what did I do wrong? I don't know either. Uh, you know what? <coughs> Let's try this. Well, no, we're going to have the same thing in the denominator, or in the uh, square root, aren't we? Uh, let's see. Wait a second, where did I get 16t squared from? Oh, because it's b squared. That makes sense. B squared minus 4. That is A. Did you, did you square the 16t again? Do what? Well, this is supposed to be B squared, right? Yeah. And B is negative 4t, mm -hmm. which when squared is 16t squared. Yeah, but did you, the, for the following like, down bottom where it says 1600, did you square that again? Uh, all we'd have to do is square the t. So that's 100 times 16, which would be 1,600. Uh, oh, wait, did the square oh, oh, flow out of the quantity? Oh, no, I had it right. I had it right because I made this 1,200. I made, uh, I put the 4 with the 3. I did have 4 AC. I just put those two together. Did I put them together in here? I did, so I don't need that 4. I've already, the 4 is right here. The 4 is in the 1,200. Everybody see that? So actually, this is correct. So 24.9 is the correct uh, normal force. Okay. Any questions about that? 1,200 right here came from the 4 with the 3 times t squared, where t squared would be 100. So the 4ac is already in it. So that parentheses quantity, is it 1 plus... 0.35 n quantity squared, or is it? It's 0.35 quantity? squared plus one. N quantity. 0.35 squared. Square mu. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the square is an outside the quantity. Correct. Okay. That's why it's written inside the parentheses. Why does the equation work? What's that? Why couldn't the one you're on? It's a good question. Why couldn't the 10.7 normal force work? Well, let's think about it. You know for a fact. You've got 20 pounds doing that. Forget this for a second. It's only going to make it worse, right? So forget it. How much normal force do you have to have? At least 20 pounds. At least. So the other solution, what the other solution is doing for us, that 10.7 whatever, what it's saying, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's saying, hey, there's another solution where you have an angle theta like this. You see? And that's how we know that that's not the right one. We want the solution where this tension will end up with some angle less than 90 degrees. Okay, good question.
Go ahead. It's 2.05. Can we have our break? Uh, once we finish this. No. Oh, thank you. Okay. Almost done. Believe it or not, we're very close. Now that we have the normal force, normal force is about 25 pounds, we can actually plug that into either one of these equations and come up with the angle. So let's go ahead and do that quickly, and then we'll take our break. So we need the inverse cosine of what? Well, that's going to be too fast. Let's take it a step at a time. So cosine theta equals 2t minus m over negative t, and therefore the inverse cosine of 2t minus n over negative t would be equal to theta. Let's ask Excel what that is, okay? It'll be quicker. So we've got the normal force in here. Let me put the tension in here just to make life easy. Tension is 10 pounds. These are all pounds. And so now all we need is the arc cosine, that's a cos cell, of 2 times t. Guys, if you're going to talk, please whisper. Minus the normal force. Okay, we'll need another set of parentheses divided by, let's see, I hate to do this, but negative t. Go. By the way, this is radians. Anybody know the Excel uh, function to go from radians to degrees? It's easy. Degrees. So then give it a, an angle in radians, it'll spit out the angle in degrees. Or, you want to do it the good old way, multiply by 180 and divide by pi. By the way, don't let me ever catch you using pi as 3.14 in Excel. There's a function in Excel for that. It's pi, open parentheses, close parentheses. Okay? Always more precise. Same thing. Uh, let's see. So there's the angle from this equation. What about from the other equation? What about from this one? Well, that would be just be the inverse sine of mu n over t. So let's try that and see what happens. So equals arc sine, or inverse sine, of mu, which was 0.35 times what? N divided by T. And you see we get the same angle in radians that we got before. So this is all consistent, it works out. So in other words, the angle. The maximum angle we can go to with this tension force is about 60 degrees, 30 degrees off horizontal before the block will start to slip. Any questions? All right.